God has called me, Marlon, to preach the truth in these last and evil days. Last and evil days. Last and evil days. And I will preach the truth. I don't care who don't like it. You won't get to heaven and say, Pastor Troy, Troy, Troy didn't tell you. Amen, somebody? I love you. I love you. Get the whole armor on. Amen. Amen. I love you. the message is simple it says but did you die though just look at your neighbor and say but did you die though and and we'll explain that in a few minutes I promise you there's a little twist to this title uh, you read John the 12th chapter 24th verse I just got one verse today verily truly I tell you and I just want to pause a few minutes I won't spend a lot of time here because I've, I've come to realize that a lot of things I'm interested in, some people are not interested in. Uh, but right here, this is a preaching point for those who like to study theology. Because when you see anywhere in the Bible these words, very truly, or very, verily, you need to pay attention because it's kind of God's secret way through Jesus of, of telling us that God's about to highlight something. And he's about to highlight something that is literally a key declaration that requires direct obedience. I just need three people to say direct obedience. direct obedience. Now I'm gonna jump forward and go to John 12, 24, the next part of that verse. Catch this guys, it says, unless a kernel of wheat falls to the ground and dies, it remains only a single seed. Please catch this, it says falls and dies. It does not say fall and die. That's a mute point that a lot of people miss. Let me, let me break it down for you again. What does it say? It says falls with an S and dies with an S. It does not say fall, singular, die, singular. Here's what you got to catch in this particular passage. Every believer will experience multiple falls and multiple deaths. Let me, you got to catch this, guys. I'm going to bless you today. Every believer is going to experience what? Multiple falls and multiple deaths. And you say, well, how do I experience multiple deaths? Well, we're not talking about a physical death. There, there are different ways to die. Sometimes you can die emotionally. Sometimes you can die, come on, spiritually. Sometimes you can die to things, which I'm going to spend a lot of time talking about how we've got to die to some certain things. But as a believer, you're not exempt from falling. Hear me, Freedom Church, and when I talk about falling, I'm not always talking about falling into sin. That's the first thing we think about in the church. Listen, you can fall and not fall into sin. You can fall short. Come on, somebody. But you must understand that I do not care how saved you are or how long you've been saved, you're going to experience multiple falls. Okay, moment of truth. If you have been saved for any length of time and you've experienced multiple falls, clap one time. That's everybody in here, and if you're not clapping, you've just never been saved. See, fall is not really the thing that God focuses on. Oh, I'm getting ahead of myself. But not only do we experience multiple falls, we experience multiple deaths. How many have experienced multiple deaths in terms of relationships in your life? Relationships that you thought were gonna be there forever, and then some way, somehow, they just kind of fell apart. I need you to understand something, that that's a part of life. I have spent too much time in my life contemplating and rethinking and, and trying to figure stuff out. And God told me this week, son, a lot of stuff is just a part of life. Yes. Good God Almighty, I feel my help today. Here's what I want to bless you with, Tyrone. Don't count your falls and don't count your setbacks. All right. You want to count something, count your comebacks. I'm almost done and you don't even know it yet. If you want to count something, count your comebacks. And listen, I've been guilty. I've been guilty of counting my setbacks. I've been guilty of counting my falls. And I, I, I understood something this week that that's a, a great trick of the enemy because if he can get you to count the wrong thing, then you'll never be able to count the right thing. And the right thing is not the setback, it's the comeback. How many setbacks have you had versus how many comebacks have you had? Oh, I got some comeback kids in here today. Here's what the Bible says for those of you that may be struggling. The Bible says a righteous man, a just man falls. Stop right there. <sighs> a righteous man or a just man falls with an S on it. Then the Bible throws us for a loop because we love to count the wrong thing. And the Bible says falls seven times. And because some of y'all graduated the top of your math class, 
you thought that meant one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Can't fall no more, Pastor, because I failed seven times according to the word. But what you must understand is the Bible has a lot of signs and shadows and metaphors. And when the Bible says that a man or a woman falls seven times, it's not talking about a numerical count of one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. It's talking about the number seven meaning completion. In other words, God says that if you're righteous, you're going to fall over and over again. But every time you fall, you get better. Every time you fall, you get stronger. Every time you fall, you're closer to being what God has called you to be. In other words, if you don't fall, now I'm not encouraging anybody to fall. Guess what? I don't have to. Falling is built into life. What you've got to understand is not to focus on the fall, because if you focus on the fall, you'll never focus on the fruit that God's got coming your way because of the many falls that you experience in life. Stop counting your falls. I'm preaching to somebody today that does a great job of beating yourself down. You do a great job of disqualifying yourself. And you think that you're the only one that's fallen. You're the, you think you're the only one that's failed. You think you're the only one that's missed the mark. Let me tell you something. Everybody in this room has fallen before. And everybody in this room before Jesus comes back is probably going to have another fall, another failure, another setback. Things are not going to go the way you prayed. Things are not going to go the way that you hoped. There are going to be some disappointments in your life. There are going to be some backstabbings in your life. Just keep on living. You think everybody's smiling, got your back. Don't you ever fool yourself. We live in a world of chameleons now. We live in a world of leeches now. One of the things that I have made a decision about upon my return to Georgia is that going forward, I am no longer going to spend copious amounts of my time giving to people who do not deposit anything into me. This is a public service announcement. So when you say pastor's acting funny, he ain't like he used to be, I'm checking the accounts. Because it's illegal to walk into a bank and make a withdrawal if you don't have an account. It's illegal to walk into a bank and take money out of a bank and you don't have an account. And sometimes we allow people to withdraw from us and they never even open that account. And God knows they never make a deposit. And the Bible says, do not count your falls. Count your comebacks. Can I tell you who counts your falls? Satan counts your falls. The Bible says that he is an accuser of the brethren. Here's how diabolical and maniacal this devil is. He will get you to accuse yourself. I know you've done it. He'll get you to talk bad about yourself. He'll get you to beat yourself up, knowing all the time, as long as you are doing that, you'll never have victory. Satan counts your falls, and Satan loves to remind you of your falls. Satan loves to remind you of your setbacks, especially when you start declaring stuff. I'm going to be healthy. I'm going to be wealthy. I'm going to be wise. God's going to give me this job. God's going to give me this increase. God's going to make a way out of no way. Then the devil will come right behind you and remind you of all the times things didn't go the way you prayed and didn't go the way you declared. You stinking mouth devil, I can't stand the devil. Because he loves to remind us of the things that didn't work the way we thought they were going to work. But he doesn't remind us how all things work together for our good. He doesn't remind us how the stuff we thought we had to have, we didn't have to have. And God blessed us anyway. He doesn't remind us how we thought we weren't going to make it. And we made it anyhow. That's why you got to remind yourself or be connected to people who have the gift of reminding you. Some of y'all need a new batch of friends. I swear you do. Because you got a batch of friends that don't remind you of the last time you went through how God brought you through. You got a batch of friends that don't remind you that God is faithful even when you can't see his face. You need a new batch of friends who can remind you that God is good all the time. And all the time, God is good. Be reminded, brothers and sisters, God doesn't count your falls. I could shout right there. Let me say it again. God doesn't count your falls. Oh, this is anti-theology because the church would have you believe that God is sitting somewhere talking about, you fell again. Fall number 9,331. That ain't God. God says, I am only interested in forgiving you if you will only ask me and I'll forgive you every time you ask me and I'll throw your sins in the sea of forgetfulness. Why are you remembering something God ain't trying to remember? 
God doesn't count your falls. God counts your comebacks. Now I just said something and I think you missed it. God doesn't count your falls. God counts your comebacks. If God counts your comebacks, then God's waiting on you to come back so he can have something to count. You sitting in the land of loss. You sitting in the land of frustration. God's saying, I'm waiting on you. If you'll come back, I'll count. And you, let me tell you something. All you got to do is come back one more time than you had a setback. It's a real simple numbers game. If you fall seven, get up eight. If you fail nine, then succeed ten. Life is always rooted and grounded in how many times can you get up. Give God praise if you got it. I got to go. I got to go. I got to go. Tell your neighbor, stop counting what the devil counts. Tell your neighbor, only count what God counts. Go back to the verse, unless a kernel. Huh. I feel good. A kernel of wheat falls with an S to the ground and dies more than once. Catch this, it only hmm, remains a single seed. Here's what I need somebody to catch today. To remain a single seed is not God's will for your life. Amen. To remain a single seed is not God's will for your life. And I'm not talking about marriage. I'm talking about you being more than you were when you first started. God is measuring us to see, are we going to be more tomorrow than we are today? See, what you got to understand, the will of God is for us to do two things, die and multiply. Say it again, die and multiply. Catch this, Freedom Church. You can't multiply if you don't die. And our entire life is programmed for survival. Our whole life is programmed, don't want to die. Don't want to die. Again, I'm not talking about physically. But you've got to learn how to die to some things emotionally. You've got to learn how to die to some people. Good God Almighty. You've got to learn to let people be people and say, you know what? I'm going to let y'all do that because I'm not going to bother y'all because y'all want to do that. God bless you. I'm going to pray for you. But I am dying to what you do. I'm dying to what you say. I'm dying to how you act. I'm dying to the way you be. Oh, good God Almighty. But hey, somebody say, I can't multiply. Can't multiply. If I don't die. Here's our problem, Tyrone. All we want to do is receive and testify. You ain't got to clap because that's you right there. We don't want to die and multiply. We just want to receive and testify. But you will never receive and testify if you don't master dying and multiplying. Here's what God wants. God wants us to morph into more. Somebody got it. God wants us to morph into more. In other words, you cannot afford to be the same person next year you are right now. And right now, it's growing time. It ain't crying time. It ain't weeping time. It ain't regret time. It's time to make sure you grow right now so that next year, you're further down the road than you are right now. Come here, John. Very, very, very truly, I tell you, unless a kernel of wheat falls to the ground and dies, I like my own sermons, y'all. It remains only a single seed. But if it dies, but if it dies, it produces, kiss this mother Oliver, many seeds. Okay, y'all missed a great place to shout right there. It produces what? Can I expose a fundamental mistake that most of us have made and continue to make, but you won't make it any longer? Oftentimes when we sow a seed, we're looking for a harvest. God says, no, look for a seed before you get a harvest. I just said something, Leonardo, that I don't know they got it. We've been programmed, sow a seed, expect a harvest. God says, read the text. When you fall and you die to things, it produces not a harvest. Help me, Holy Ghost. It produces many seeds. What do you do with the many seeds? You sow the many seeds so you can have many. When the last time you asked God for more seeds? We pray for more harvest. God says, they teach them, son. Teach them. When the time you are, oh, God, I feel so good today. When's the last time you said, God, I need many seeds? Give me many seeds. Oh, I feel good. Give me many seeds. If I sow many seeds, I know I'm going to have many harvests. And y'all right here struggling with the little seeds you sowing. Y'all struggling with a tithe and an offering. 
And God says, until you learn to love sowing many seeds, you're always going to be struggling. Finally. I'm preaching here. The Bible says, did that thing fall and die? You ain't lost nothing. See, what you're doing is you multiplying while you're crying. Good God Almighty. Because time has a place in this thing. It looked like God ain't moving. Looked like that phone ain't gonna never ring for that next job. Looked like they're never gonna promote you. Looks like better's never gonna come your way. Let me tell you something. If you sow the seeds, then all you got to do is wait on the Lord because we serve a father that ain't never lied. He ain't never failed. And the harvest is on the way from the many seeds that you sow. See, here's the problem with religion. Religion demands perfection. And I need to tell somebody, you got to make a choice. You're going to have to choose perfection or production. Let me tell you this. You can't have both. Now, if you're going to choose perfection, you can forget about production. People who pursue perfection and try to make sure everybody else is perfect, their lives are not very productive. But how many of you know you can be productive and not be perfect? I wish I had a church in here. How many of you know you can get a lot done in the kingdom and still have some flaws, have some issues in your tissues, and God still be working with you, in you, and through you? Why? Because he's not looking for perfection. I'm trying to be Jesus Jr. Stop. There was only one and there will only be one. Again, this is not a license to do whatever you want to do. We strive for perfection. But we are going to make sure that if we are never perfect, we are productive. Give God praise if you got it. I got to go. I got to go. I got to go. Can I go just a little deeper? What's the one thing that enables a seed to morph into multiplying into something more? What's the one thing? It's like the first thing that, that really triggers that transformation. You know what it is. Dirt. Y'all trying to use a proper word, soil. I like y'all, amen. I like y'all. Soil. Nah, we in the country. Let's say, somebody say dirt. Here's what I need you to know. The dirt doesn't work until the seed dies in the dirt. A packet of seeds will never morph. A packet of seeds will never produce any fruit as long as it's in the packet. Some of y'all have been in a safe place far too long. Some of you've been in a protected place far too long. You've got to say, God, bury me in the dirt. God, bury me in their gossip. God, bury me in their hate. God, bury me in their jealousy. I'm preaching to somebody right now. You've been trying to avoid the dirt. God says, dive in the dirt. Die in the dirt and watch me make you more than you would have ever been had it not been for them. God made dirt and it won't hurt. Y'all heard of the five second rule? Oh, ain't nobody heard of the five. Y'all some lying church folk. I'm going to try y'all one more time. I ain't going to play with y'all. Have you ever heard of the five second rule? All right, now here's a moment of truth. Have you ever engaged, participated, and bought into the five second rule. Pastor Tish, oh, she don't like this part of my sermon. My wife actually thinks that if you're cooking on the grill and you drop a $20 steak or a $2 hot dog, she actually thinks that you're supposed to take the steak, the hot dog, or the chicken that you dropped on the ground and throw it in the trash can. The devil is a lie. You out your mind. She really believes this. I tell her, baby, everybody that grills, everybody that cook, if they drop a piece of meat on the ground, they're going to pick it up, blow it off, put it back on the grill, and you go eat it. Yeah, you don't hate it, boo. You don't hate a whole lot of food I dropped on the ground, and you told me it was good. Somebody said, Pastor. What's your point? If we can drop a piece of meat, I'm going to help somebody. If we can drop a piece of meat, pick it up and blow it off and put it on the grill and it still come out good, 
God can let you fall and pick you up and put you back up and everybody be talking about, oh, you are blessed. Folk don't know how much dirt we got on us. Because we've been on the grill. And we still taste good. I wish I had a church in this. Give God praise if y'all getting this. Somebody say, do not be afraid of the dirt. Let your haters hate. Including your family. I don't care if you brought them to church. Let them co-workers on your job talk about you behind your back. Let that supervisor keep on messing with you. Writing you up, trying to get you fired. Yeah, just cut. let the dirt be the dirt. See, what you, you worry about the dirt being the dirt. No, you let the seed be the seed. I need to tell somebody, you are the seed. And if there's dirt in your life, God is doing more than you can see. I dare somebody say, bring on the dirt so that I can multiply. Let me close. Sometimes we think we're being buried because it feels like we're being buried. Buried by debt. I wish I had a real church. Buried by enemies. Buried by problems. Buried by habits and addictions. And oftentimes it feels like we're being buried. God told me to tell somebody today, you aren't being buried, you're being planted. Hello, somebody. Yeah, I see you. You aren't being buried. Okay, I got some slow people. Somebody say, Pastor, what's the difference between being buried and being planted? The difference, I'm almost done. The difference is in the purpose. Help me, Holy Ghost. The difference is in the purpose. Same dirt, but a different purpose. What do you mean, Pastor? Okay, when something is buried, when something is buried, it is called being put in a resting place. Help me, Holy Ghost. But when something is planted, it's called a birthing place. Come on, somebody. It's called a growing place. It's called a transforming place. And you are being buried, baby. You're being planted. And God is doing more in your life. Then you can see, a seed is never buried. Preach, Pastor Troy, we ain't seen you. I'll say it again, you got it, a seed is never buried. Why, because once you put it in the dirt, it goes to work. Come on, somebody. Once you put it in the ground, it gets down. I wish I had a church in here. A seed is never buried. A seed is always planted. And as I get ready to take my seed, I just want you to remember, that you are always the seed. You are always the seed. And if you're always the seed, then when things feel like they are over your head, when it seems like it's more than you can bear, when it seems like you're being overwhelmed, forgotten and hidden, just remember that a seed is never buried. It's always planted. You say, well, Pastor, well, but Pastor, it caused me a lot of pain. I went through this situation and it, it hurts me to this day. And I know it caused you a lot of pain. But did you die though? Oh. Like my own sermon. See, you have to die to the hurt. If you die to the hurt, then power will come out of your pain. And the thing you used to cry about, you don't even cry. Somebody said, he preaching to me. I know the failure caused you shame. Or, or maybe I'm just one of many here. Do I have anybody that's experienced failure and it caused you a little shame? You was embarrassed to show, come on, yourself. And you start to hold your head down. I know it caused you shame, I just gotta ask you something. But did you die though? See, the reason why we keep repeating a lot of the same things we are repeating it's because we're going in the dirt, but we aren't dying. Good God Almighty. We're going through it, but we aren't dying to it. It's time for somebody to say, I'm not going to worry no more. I'm not going to cry anymore. I'm not going to. Good God Almighty. I'm dying to some things today. See, when you die to failure, fuel comes out of your failure. And you be like, you know what? 
Failure actually makes me successful because I learned something when I failed that I would have never learned had I excelled. Good God Almighty. Here's my last one. I know that some of y'all been waiting on the Lord a mighty long time. Can I get an amen from somebody been waiting on the Lord a mighty long time? Oh, you don't want to say amen. You've been waiting on that boo thing. You want to be booed up, bad up. I know. And you've been praying to the Lord, saying, Lord, where, where's my boo thing? Every time you turn around, somebody ugly and got married. You're like, Lord, what you doing, Lord? I know I look better than you. Come on, y'all know y'all say it. I know I look better than them, Lord. I know I got more going on than them, Lord. How they getting married? Oh, y'all. Sometimes we get tired of waiting on God. Y'all scared to tell the truth. Sometimes God take his sweet time. Like he ain't here. Like we ain't on his mind. Like he too busy to come see by what we want. But he's just busy seeing by everybody. I see you, God. And sometimes we get weary and tired of waiting on God. And I know you're tired and weary. But did you die, though? Let me bless five of y'all. Until you die to getting weary and until you die to getting tired, you will have to wait longer on God because they that wait on the Lord shall renew their strength. But you got to wait with the right attitude. You can't wait fussing at God. You can't wait mad at God. You got to be like, Wusa. I shall wait on the Lord for as long as it takes. Because every time I don't wait on the Lord, I get myself in a bigger mess. So I'm a woosa and wait on the Lord. I'm going to die to being tired. I'm preaching to somebody right now. I'm going to die to getting weary and making bad decisions. When you get tired, say, God, renew my strength. When you get tired, say, God, restore my joy. See, let me tell you something. You're going to have to get some more patience if you're going to win your race. You pray for everything else, but you're going to have to get some more patience. You can't hurry God. You can't bully God. And you might well quit telling God how saved you are and how good you've been doing. God, you know I've been saved three weeks. As if you can move God because you've been righteous for a minute. Child, you got to wait just like the rest of us. And you better learn how to wait. Because when you wait wrong, you got to wait long. Good God Almighty. I gotta go, man. Ask your neighbor, how you gonna wait? What'd they say? Would you like to know the secret? <laughs> I am, trust me, brother, I want you. Well, I just wanna, I wanna test the room because I've been commanded by God not to cast my pearls before swines. And I don't know if there's any oink in the house tonight. But would you like to know the secret to this life? Catch this. If you die to it, you'll get through it. That's a clapping moment right there, brothers and sisters. It's so simple that it misses us. If you will die to it, you will get through it. See, the only reason why it bothers you is because it bothers you. You missed it. The only reason why it hurts you is because it hurts you. But everything in life has a plug. I wish I had a church. And you know, I never let my plug walk. Y'all pray for me, man, somebody. Everything in life has a plug. And if it's bothering you, troubling you, disturbing your peace, killing your joy, then today is a good day to say, I'm going to pull the plug on them. I'm going to pull the plug on y'all. I'm going to pull the plug on you. And I ain't going to let nothing mess with my peace. Either I got the money or I ain't got the money, but ain't nothing out of money. No more, no more, no more. No more. If I got one friend, or I got no friends, nothing. I'm pulling. I'm pulling. I dare somebody to pull. I'm pulling the plug. I'm pulling the plug. Woo!
If you die to it, you'll get through it. Somebody's got to die today. Somebody's got to die. So that the next time you're going through something and it's just unraveling your faith, disturbing your joy and your peace, ask yourself this question. But did you die though? Yeah, you cried, but did you die though? Yeah, you got frustrated and cussed, but did you die though? Because one thing I know about something when it's dead, nothing disturbs its peace. You can go to the cemetery right now and yell as long and as loud as you can. You can take a thousand speaker system out there, amplify it and get a microphone and make all kind of noise. Uh-huh. Do you know what everything in the cemetery dead is going to do? When it's storming outside, uh-huh. lightning flashing, wind blowing, you know what the dead are doing? Some of y'all have got to learn how to assume this position. For God I live and for God I die and the only thing that's going to make me move is the power of my God because if it ain't God I ain't moving did you die though some of you been through but you didn't die oh you went through the divorce preach Pastor Troy Wynn Sr. You signed the papers and y'all can't stand each other. But the question is, did you die though? And I know you didn't die. Cause you're still mad cause they left. I know you didn't die cause you can't stand the person they married. When you die, you be like, bless y'all. I wish you well. I pray nothing but blessings over your marriage. Some of y'all have got to learn how to take a page out of the book of Tabitha. Y'all know Tabitha? Brown, is it it? There's a book of Tabitha Brown that the whole church needs to read because Tabitha Brown gave us a beautiful demonstration of what it means to die to people's opinion. Good God Almighty. What it means to die to what other folks are saying. Our beloved sister Wendy confused Williams. I'm sorry I gave her an extra name. Who has a notorious nasty habit of dipping in other folk business. So that attention can come her way. Got the right one. This week. Said some things uh, in reference to Miss Tabitha. And everybody was waiting for the clap back. Because you know, black folks will clap back. Come on, somebody. We good at it. It's our gift from heaven. Amen, somebody. And we were all sitting on the edge of our seat, waiting on this well deserved clap back. We've been wanting somebody to get windy for a long time. We said, Thank you, Lord. Get a tab. And Tab said, listen now. Listen now. Listen now. Okay? All right? I wish you well. I pray you experience what I have. Some of y'all need to make today the last day you argue with anybody. Ever again. I got people mad at me right now because I won't argue with them. I'm like, I'm like Pies, who is you? Y'all ain't ready. Y'all ain't ready. I'm like Pies, you mad. I'm happy. I'm not gonna argue with you. And y'all give energy 
to energy drainers when you should give praise to the God that protects you from your enemies. When you should give praise when no weapon formed against you can prosper. But you got to die to it though. You got to die to what they think. Die to what they say. Die to how they treat you. Die to how they mistreat you. And walk through life untouchable. Walk through life with seeds on top of seeds on top of seeds. The reason why you're suffering is because you refuse to die. But today's the day that we say, God, I'm ready to die. Give God praise if you got it. Not talking about physical death. Talking about mental death. Well, I'm not going to let you trouble my mind no more. Who am I talking to today? I'm done. I'm done. But I need you to identify your word right now. Claim it. And say, God, thank you for speaking to me today. You've been praying and this is the answer to your prayer. Probably not what you thought. But God teaches us as he transforms us into being who he wants us to be. I'm going to ask everybody to bow your head for a hot two minutes and I'm out of here. Here's the moment of truth. I've done my job. I've delivered the word. I've given the seed. Now you have to prove your good ground. Receive the word today and make it produce many more seeds. See, if you die to it, you'll be unbothered. If you die to it, you'll be unfazed. I'm telling you what I know. When you die to it, you'll be unmoved. The Bible says steadfast. <laughs> Unmovable. Always abounding in the work of the Lord. Father, we pause for a parenthetical moment of prayer. Simply, first of all, to say thank you for the word today. <laughs> Because one word from you can change our entire lives. Father, you are showing us us in a mirror that does not lie. Many today are often bothered by things that should be deemed irrelevant. By people who must be tagged insignificant. And today we pull the plug on the energy thieves of our lives. We pull the plug on the joy killers in our camp. And we say, Father, I don't want to be moved unless I'm being moved by you. Yes, yeah. Yes, yeah. Been through a lot in my life. But a lot of stuff I never died to. I cried, but I didn't die. I complained, but I didn't die. I whined, but I didn't die. But today, God, I am the seed that falls to the ground. <laughs> and I die so I can multiply. Help us morph into more. Don't let us be the same. Don't let us stay the same. But let us morph into more. In the name of your son, Yeshua, we pray. Amen. 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 And amen. amen. Now testify with your hands if you're going to die to some things today. Come on, let your hands testify. Let your hands testify. Glory. Hallelujah. But did you die though?